In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I built a full lead generation workflow inside of N10, which allows me to be able to add what company I wanna target. Let me use Apify to scrape thousands of leads from Google Maps. Let me use Animal Finder to find the emails of the decision makers in the companies. Let me scrape their website, which then goes to AI to be able to make an icebreaker or email campaign before adding it to our Google Sheet database. And in case it's your first time here, my name is Michele, and just over the past 12 months, we've personally helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automations and taught over 20,000 people in the process. With that being said, let's dive in. So I'm gonna run the whole thing from scratch and then show you step-by-step step how I built it. Uh, if I go to my Google Maps scraper, this is where we have the dashboard. And there's two different sheets. The first sheet is roles, where we get to add exactly what company we wanna target, where the company's from, so location, and how many numbers, which is the output results of the actual scraper. And then emails will be the list of emails with the full name, email, company name, type, and icebreaker as well, which we can use for the email campaigns that we can send to the clients later on. So in this case, I can put Metspa, location, you can put New York, United States. The number we can put is still 400, I think that's fine. And then status will be run. Now in this case, whenever the status column changes, this sends a request to N10 saying, hey, something changed here, execute the workflow, start the workflow. So in this case, if I press execute workflow, what this will now do is it should send the item through of the one with the status column is equal to run. Let me send the request to this software called Apify, which is a software that allows us to be able to go to Google Maps and scrape the actual uh, results, right? And we get the place name, the score, the street, Bayside, so the city, the website, the category, the URL, and a ton more stuff that we can use to be able for us to uh, go to the next steps. In this case, the output was only 200. Before sending it to the next steps, which is using an email finder, which is basically looking at the decision makers' emails from that company before scraping the website of that company and using AI to be able to generate an icebreaker email. Now, bear in mind that we had 190 items go through here, but only 36 ended up here because we do have a filtering sort of criteria to make sure that all the leads that we get in our database are all qualified, well not qualified, but they're all valid that we can actually reach out to. Before sending everything to our Google Sheet database, which is the one right here. So here we have the roles and the status is turned to done. So we also have a status update and the emails here will be the full name, email, company name type, and we have the icebreaker as well, right? And it's a whole list of emails. And the good thing about this is that they're all valid and they're verified, right? This isn't just random emails that we get. These are all good emails that we can use for the email campaigns maybe to send it on instantly or send it on smart lead to be able to take these icebreakers, which are things that we use to send emails to, to customers um, and get business. So, hey Kiki, love that Flushing Medical Spa offers the first ever permanent laser acne treatment with AviClear. Also a fan of your holistic approach, tailoring beauty goals, wanted to run something by you. I hope you forgive me, but I creeped you, your side quite a bit. And I know that cutting edge FDA approved tech is important to you guys, or at least I'm assuming this giving the focus of multidality, given the focus of XYZ. And it gives them a whole email that's very much personalized to their business. Because again, this is different. We have a framework that we use, but based on the information that we get and the website scrape, this changes. All right, so the actual workflow is divided into three different steps. The first one is scraping Google Maps. The second one is finding the emails using a software called Anymail Finder. And then the third one is adding all the details of the person and, and the company to our Google Sheet database right here. So there's a few different ways that you can actually build this uh, or have the input. The input is just like what starts the automation, the trigger. Um, I thought of having a Google Sheet database where in the first sheet you would have the information and then you would have a status. And the status you can either put run or done so that when it runs, it triggers the automation. And then at the end of the actual automation, it then goes to this way to update the status. Why is because the way that Anytime works is that the automations are linear and they have a hierarchy, which means that now if I start the automation, it will go here first and then it will go here. But if I put it below, it will run this whole thing first and then it will give me a status update. So I know that if this right here is turned to done, then this whole thing ran successfully. That's just a quick hack that I use whenever I build systems. So once we actually added the information here, which is company type, location, and number uh, of results, then we can turn the status. This will trigger the automation. It will send a signal saying, hey, N10, start the actual thing. We filter by the status. So right here, the data that we get is company type, location, number, and status. We filter by, is the status run? Because if it is, then we can use it. If not, then obviously we can't go forward. So if this is run, then we send it to a server called Apify. Apify is the Amazon for scrapers. So we use this server and I've used it in a ton of my videos where I go here and I connect it to my automations in N10 to be able to scrape something. So today we're using the actual Google Maps scraper. 
You can press in here, make an account, and then you will get to this console that looks like this. And by the way, you will have $5 of free credits for your account. I almost used them. Never mind. I actually used all of them. But the way that this works is that we pay per event. So it's $4 for a thousand credits. So it's about five for $5, you can probably get like 1,200. And the way that this scraper actually works is that we have two different ways of running it. We can either run it on the actual platform itself, or we can add fields like MetSpa, the location, the number of places, or we can use JSON, which is the programming language. Very, very easy, don't get overwhelmed. It's just a way for us to be able to add it to an automation to call the actual uh, scraper saying, hey, here's a location, here's a keyword, here's a number of results, go out there and scrape. And so for us to be able to connect Apify to N10, right here, we have to use the run an actor and get data set node. So inside the first step you have to do is go here and create a new credential and you have to connect your account and you will log in directly. You don't need an API key for this. Once this is done, you'll do actor, run an actor and get data set. You can do recently used actors. And then the actor itself will be Google Maps Scraper. And you know this because the name of the Google Maps Scraper is Crawler Google Places, Compass. Compass, Crawler Google Scraper. You can also put expression and you can find the ID here, up here in the URL. Once we have this, I can turn it back to list and choose Google Maps Scraper. Here will be the actual JSON. And the JSON is something that we have here, right? The JSON. So you just copy this, you paste it here, go here, and you will start replacing the fields that you need to replace, which is the location, the number of places, and the actual keyword that it will use to go to Google Maps and scrape. In this case, the location query will be location here. So we add it as a variable. The, where is it? Number, so max crawl places per search, it will be here. And then the show company type, you'll put it here right so now you have three different variables that are dynamic that's the beautiful thing about this is that if we change the variables here it will change the way that we scrape the automations in um, apify and so here it will scrape the number of items now i said to scrape 400 the reason why it didn't scrape 400 is because i used all my credits that i had but assuming that you have uh, all the credits available to you you'll be able to see 400 here if you're looking for 400 results. And here you get the title of the place, the category, the address, the neighborhood, the street, the city, postcode, state, country code, the website, which is something that we care about, the phone, and a bunch more other things that we don't really use. We could use them to even add more personalization to the actual email. And once this is done, we only wanna send through the companies that actually have a website, which is why here we say, if the website, which is something that you find here, website exists, right, it's not empty, then we can go to the next steps. Why? Well, it's because if there's no website, then there's no email that we can use. Once we have this here, we can use a loop over items, but let's say we had a thousand results coming in. What it will do is that it will send 200 through this whole flow, and then it will go back here and do another 200 until the thousand results that came through before are run through. And so let's say we have a thousand results here. What it will do is that it will send 200 first, and then 200 again until the thousand results are finished. We do this because we want to minimize the error rate of the actual automation. So we're able to send X amount of items at the same time, especially because right here, we're using AI. And if you send too many results to AI, it will uh, overload. It could break, which is something that we don't want for a system that we can use for the long term. All right, so the next steps here is finding emails using AnyMail Finder. And AnyMail Finder is a software, a certain sort of server that we use to be able to give the domain of the company and tell it, hey, I'm looking for CEOs. And then it gives me the email if it finds it. And it also validates them, which is great. Now I can go to anymailfinder.com and you will get on this page right here. So they find real emails verified in real time. Now I've tried hundreds of softwares when it comes to finding emails, uh, cause I used to use clay.com a lot, which is a software that it uses a ton of these softwares. And Animail Finder is one of the best, right? Now, if I go to the pricing section here, I can see that on a monthly basis, we get 450 credits per month. We pay 11 euros. Obviously now it's Black Friday, so it'd be 14. Um, but for 400 credits, we would pay 26 euros or 20 euros in this case. So 400 credits, what that means is it's a uh, valid email. So let's say you send a thousand requests and it only finds 20 emails that are valid. You only pay 20 credits. You don't pay 1000, which is much more cost effective than a lot of the softwares that I work with as well. So once you have this, you can get a free trial. You'll be able to see somewhere here on the page to get a free trial for three days and you can choose whatever plan you have and you will get 20 credits of free trials just to test it out. I recommend that you get the 400 credits per month, which is 20 bucks a month now. Obviously it depends on how many emails you need, right? You also have the 10,000 credits, which is hundred bucks a month, which is gonna be more than enough. And now once we have this, we can go to the API. So we wanna read the API documentation, which is a uh, some sort of document that allows us to see exactly what we can automate 
and how do we set up the automations within Animal Finder. If I go here, I get introduced to this page. On the left-hand side, you can see that we have different actions. Find emails in bulk, Geo Lead Finder, other, uh, find email, right? In this case, we have to pick the one that we wanna do. Now, let's say I wanted to find a person's email. I can go to this action right here. And in the middle, it tells me exactly a summary of what this does. The endpoint, which is a URL that we'll use in our automation. And below it's the curl, which is the thing that we use to set up the, uh, the request in N10. But most importantly, it tells me, hey, here are the fields that we need to send to uh, an email finder in order for it to actually uh, get the email. So in this case, you can also see here that we need the domain of the company. So in this case, Microsoft.com and the full name as well. Now the full name is something that we don't have, so I can't use this request in itself. What I can use is find a decision maker's email because the only thing that it asks me here is the domain of the company and the decision maker category, which means that I'm looking for CEOs in this company, which is great. So all we have to do here is copy the curl. You can go back to n right here, and then you can actually add a HTTP request and import curl, paste this and import it. So now you have everything set up. And the only thing that you need is an API key. If I go here, I can get my API key on the top right and you can copy this and bring it back to n and paste it here instead of your API key. And now you have this here. So I already made this actual request. So I'm gonna delete this, but just to show you exactly what we have to do. If I go here, I can see that this is my API key. And what I need is the domain of the actual company. Now you could also have a field for the category in case you wanna find other people in the company. But in this case, I just care about the actual founder, CEO. So that's fine. And now we have to ask ourselves, how do we get the domain of the actual company? So right here, um, yeah, I can see that we don't actually get the domain, but we get the website. All right, so I just added the website here into Miro. And the website here is consisted of HTTPS or www, that's the first part. Then we have the actual domain, which is this right here, boom. And then we have everything after the slash, which is just information, extra information that we don't need. And so for us in the automation, and my drawing is complete horrible, uh, but we need this. We need the, the actual domain itself, which is why the next step from the APFI is using an edit fields node, which is why here we use a formula. Now don't get overwhelmed. I can just copy this uh, this URL and I can actually show you exactly why we're doing it the way we're doing it. I can paste it here. So this is what it is. So the first thing we have to do is replace any time that we see this, replace it with a space so we don't see it anymore. Now, sometimes we actually have this HTTP with a DS, which is why we also have to replace this with a space. And sometimes we also get this, which means that we have to replace this as well with a space. And most times or sometimes we also get this right here, which means that we want to split the actual website by the presence of a slash and only get this part right here. And I, it might be a bit overwhelming at the start because you never used it before uh, or to this extent, but it actually is very, very simple when you go through it. So this is the website. The first step is dot replace all. So we have, we have to replace every single instance that we see of a HTTP slash slash. We replace it with a space, not a space, just with, with nothing, the space here. We use the exact same thing when we see HTTPS. So here it will be dot HTTPS uh, like this. So now we deleted this, but sometimes we also get the three W's. So again, dot this, and we have to delete this part and just put www dot, and then we have, there's an extra dot here. That's fine. So now we have the domain and then we have slash. So now what we have to do is we have to split this by the presence of a presence of a space or slash. There we go. And now we get the first part and we get the second part. And we wanna put dot first to be able to get the domain. That's how you take a full website that's unstructured and turn it in a way where it actually makes sense. So that's the logic here. And the next step here is actually using the animal finder, like I mentioned, and pulling in the domain from here. So it's all structured. Every single time that it comes through, we basically checked all the different use cases of any kind of website that comes through and we format it in a way where it makes sense. Now, once this is done, then any email finder will give us this output right here. It will give us the domain again. It will give us the person full name, the email, if it finds it, and the email status. If I go to table, I make this like this. And sometimes I can see here that the email status is not found for most of them, but when it does find it, it's, it's valid, valid, risky, valid, 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 right? So even the ones that it does find, if it's risky, that means it might not be verified, right? Or it's not verified at all. And so what we do here is we set a filter saying, hey, if the email status is valid and the full name exists, then we send it through. Then we make sure that we only have the valid emails left that we can use. Because the thing about email campaigns is that you can run email campaigns to a ton of emails, 
But if the emails themselves are not verified emails, then you are at risk with your email campaign and you will be at risk with your domain. So you wanna make sure that every single email that you use is verified, it's cleaned up, it's all good. Once we have this here, then we can go and scrape the website. Now, the reason why we scrape the website, which is a third part of the actual sort of workflow is because we want more information about the company. And so here we use a simple HTTP request to be able to get the domain right here, add a HTTPS uh, colon slash slash and just scrape the actual thing, like scrape the website so that we get an output show data. There we go. Uh, an output that looks like this. So data, we have a bunch of HTML, right? HTML, by the way, is just if I go here, for example, I go to inspect. This is the HTML. It's basically all the text, all the colors and so on. Now, the problem with this is that we can't feed the HTML to AI because it's super, 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 super long, right? What we can do though, is using a next step called the extract HTML content. So with this node, what we can do is get the data, really, really long data. And I call the website scrape and we get the body of this because it is the actual data. And basically what we do is we extract the text. So as you can see here, this is much shorter, right? It just goes until here rather than having something so long that looks like this. Uh, which is why we're able to then use this, the website scrape, which is in text and feed it into the AI step, right? Now the AI step is something that we use to be able to make the icebreaker. Now, the first thing you have to do is go here, create a new credential, and you can simply go to platformtheopenai.com and you can go to dashboard to be able to get the API key, create a key here, and then bring it back to N10 and you can paste it here to connect your account. Text, message model, it's fine, uh, 4.1 mini. Then we have to put text because that is the thing that we're using. The action that we're taking is messaging a model. The model itself will be 4.1 mini because it's a mixture of quality and speed. And then here will be the actual system prompt, which is describing what it needs to do, but also giving it the icebreaker. So the icebreaker is a thing that we use in our email campaigns. And so we start using variables like, hey, name, interesting fact, uh, other fact, other fact here, fourth fact, some implied belief if they have, and a bunch more other things that we can use that AI will know that it needs to replace those with each company's information. And then we give it some rules as to like what tone and what things it should say and not say. And by the way, I'll show you exactly how you can get the whole system for free. So don't worry. But once we have the system prompt, then the user prompt will be the actual profile information. This will be the profile, which we get from an email finder. We get the person full name. You can't see it here because this will be the first result uh, and it couldn't find it. But as you can see here, we have Animal Finder, Keely Lee, which is the owner. Who is the there you go, owner? Company name will be something that we get from the Google Maps. We can't see it now just because we need to unpin the Animal Finder. It's just a rule that Anything has, uh, but it will be here, title. And then the website scrape will be something that we get here, website scrape. So with these three pieces of information about the company, we then draft a high converting, personalized icebreaker that we can use for our email campaigns, right? Which is great. And then we add it all back to our database, which looks like this, where we have, again, one sheet is roles, one sheet is emails. And you make a Google sheet that looks like this with full name, email, company name, type, and icebreaker. You connect it to any 10 through here. You can go here, you can sign in with Google, and then you will choose the sheet within document, append a row. Here will be Google Maps Scraper because that is the name of the Google sheet. And then make sure you're using the right uh, sheet which will be emails. And now what we do is we pull a fields, animal finder. Oh, there you go. Person full name, bring it back here. Email, company name, type, and icebreaker as well, which we get from here, icebreaker. So the good thing about this workflow here is that we're passing information dynamically throughout the whole thing. And we're using softwares after softwares to patch them all together to be able to make a real concrete system that allows us to be able to get from this to this, which is insane, right? And now again, one more step that you could do here is you can connect instantly's API. Uh, instantly is just a, let me go here, instantly.ai, instantly.ai is a platform where we can do email campaigns and we can send the icebreaker there to be able to then make the emails and make a campaign to start reaching out to clients directly. And as always, if you want the full system for free so you can import it into your own account, then you can go to the school community, you can go to the classroom section, you can go to the templates vault and you'll be able to see the latest video, which is lead generation system, Google Maps here, and you can download the blueprint here. And if you apply and you get in, you also get access to the AI Automations 101 course, which is a very comprehensive course that takes a real beginner in AI automation to someone who's actually able to build automations for themselves or for other businesses. Most of the content that we put out here is not available on YouTube, which is why we keep it exclusive to the community right here. Disclaimer here is that not everybody gets in. So please put some thoughts into your answers and I'll see you on the inside. And if you are a nine to five working professional and you're making at least 5K a month and you wanna start your AI agency to get to 10K and even 40K a month or more, then check out the first thing down below. And if you like this video, then you're going to love this video up here where I show you exactly how you can make viral content using Poppy and NSN. With that being said, 
I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.